50 is going to lean one way soon as uh, the community vote put 82% in favor of Boomy and Sandstorm. So a lot of general community favor towards this team, but we'll see how well that works out as, of course, no surprise to see Faison over onto the Wushang, and of course, Cody Travis on the Barasa, and then on the blue team, we've got Sandstorm on the Shell and Boomy on the Cody. Now, as Duke said earlier, we are now in our top eight. This is round one, winner semifinals of top eight, which means the winner of this is going to move on into a guaranteed top three position. So a victory here is absolutely massive you know both of these players are used to throughout their careers coming out on the victory spot here so far in this game about 40 seconds in boomy and sandstorm have a nice comfy little lead yeah they managed to add up that damage but if you don't get the stocks might not matter as red team does have that stage control phase on with the neutral light leads to cody's falling side air another neutral light but cody locks up phase on giving boomy the punish you know, Faison is looking for the signatures. They're going to trade one for one. Now, Faison and Boomy going to go at it. Of course, neutral airs from Boomy's blasters. Going to zone Faison away, but he lands on the platform, stays a little bit in the air. Recovery comes out from Faison, and that is now a lead for this red team. Faison is big. in position, but he got hit by, I think, like the final blast there. So he ended up bouncing and being in hit stun. Chasing down, hits the ground pound, hits the Sarah, That's Sandstorm, big. eats the weapon, toss the dare, and Boomy comes down for the save. Oh, but it's not enough. Oh, Sandstorm still going to fall there, and that is because, quote unquote, technically because of Boomy. Boomy actually picked up sort of an unofficial double KO, one on his opponent and one on his teammate. Oh. Sandstorm now down to his final stock. He needs to survive Faison just lost his first stock moments ago but a falling sider from cody could put boomy alongside sandstorm ended up picking up both with that side air the side light into the neutral air there's the d light that one's not going to be the ko move just yet but he has the blasters several moves from the blasters Combo? will ko here nice interruption how was he able to aim that so perfectly cody travis a blasters legend that was like an off the top ropes shot. He was falling down from the sky and was still like, I'm a side air this opponent as he's hitting my teammate. Side seek, Boomy off the stage, didn't make a connection. It looked like he was perfectly setting up for the recovery onto Cody. When he hits the side light, has his opponent jumping. There's gonna be a full team wipe of the red team. Sandstorm gonna have to be careful. He does have a weapon here. Meanwhile, Faison is disarmed. Same thing for Cody as the spawn comes in. There is the spear for Cody. We know Wu Shang's signatures are potent. They're strong in their own right, but they also have amazing startup. Yeah, lots of damage on the side of Sandstorm. There's a lot of tools that the red team can use to finish Sandstorm off. But right now, it seems like they're trying to get that damage onto, Co uh, onto Boomy, and they're doing a great job of doing it. A nice side punish. Faison knew that that was going to put Cody a little bit in the air so he could just run in, throw out that side signature, not hit his teammate, and find the KO onto Boomy. This is going to be really tough for Sandstorm to come back from. We know how strong Boots can be in the 1v2. Sandstorm not throwing out too many attacks. The Nair recovery, not enough force on that recovery as Cody there hits you go. the stun with the neutral light to lead to the recovery from Faison. Now you saw Sandstorm trying to take off the top and I feel like that's probably one of the more successful ways to do that because there are boots moves that put you in some serious active frame time. Maybe not as much as like a blasters in light, but still giving plenty of time to punish. But with the recovery, when you're chasing up, you are moving with your opponent so that puts you further away from the other opponent who might be hot on your trail and there you're seeing that second stock of sandstorm got taken so incredibly quickly that he played basically half the game on his third stock and uh he did it pretty well he was he managed to survive but really just like being put in that back seat and just having to try to play survival means that they couldn't aggress as much as they likely wanted to so I'm looking at the graph here from the previous game, and I'm really looking at Sandstorm's second stock. That was the one where he ended up falling due to part from Boomy, who actually put the final hit on him while he fell. That was seemingly the difference maker for this team because everything else is looking pretty good. Sandstorm's damage isn't great, 
but not being able to be in the game for as long because he was taking off that second stock means he doesn't have that time to put out that damage on it. Boomy might get bullied out very early on. Yeah, that NSIG pickup from Phazon was great, and the side air keeps Boomy to the outside. Sandstorm just giving him a little tap to help him out, but he ends up getting caught by Cody, and there's the pogo. Boomy's going to fall. Cody and Phazon building a big lead. I'm so surprised by this Cody Faison team. Like, of course, they're legends, they're very good, but we haven't seen them play since the summer championship last year where they were just like tired of giving fifth place again. And now we're looking at a potential guaranteed top three from them. They're up one game, they have a massive lead, they're playing incredible Brawlhalla. I, they're playing out of their minds. It's crazy because, again, like prior to this set, a lot of people were like, yo, Boomy Sandstorm, 100%. Like 82% of the people in the, the chat right now we're rooting for Boomy and Sandstorm. And yet, Cody Travis and Faison, they're kind of holding them to the flames. Cody Zax coming in. Nice interruption there. He does put out a little bit of damage onto his teammate. But Faison, you saw how far that downlight sent him. So Faison is already in KO damage. Oh, Boomy with the turnaround. Cody going to make it back safely. Faison does get taken out. But I'm still watching Boomy's health bar tick deeper and deeper red on the second stock. And I'm still watching Cody on his first stock. He is in the red. But it's Barraza, a high defense legend. You're going to have to find a nice KO move, not just any old KO move here. Yo, Faison almost takes out Boomy with that recovery from below the map. Sandstorm almost takes out Boomy with that recovery. Cody's still living. A little bit of team damage coming out. They really want to take this stock off of Cody, but it's Cody's side air from the middle of the stage. Boomy on final stock. I'm surprised that Cody dashed that down light and didn't just throw it out over the corner in place. Great little combo, very quick. You saw if they were just a little bit more to the left side of the stage, that was going to be an orange KO for Boomy on the phase on. Oh, but they did manage to bring this one back, despite the fact... Oh, actually, wait, no, Boomy's a full stock behind us. I looked up, I was like, oh, there's like, two people in red, two people in yellow, maybe. Yeah, they bullied Boomy very hard, setting up for the edge guard here. Boomy got under that down signature that Faison was gravity canceling it. If you try to punish it from the left or the right, that can be really tough. So coming from below was the right way to do it. Bottom side, not going to make the connection, but the top side does. Sending Boomy up, but he's back over on the wall. Side air, Boomy's gone. Faison and Cody, four stocks. This is big for Faison and Cody. They're about to be up 2-0 over the fan favorites, Sandstorm and Boomy. The return of the world of champions, multi-time world champions. Did any of like us three put Cody Faison in top three? No. Okay, that's what I thought. We goofed. I mean, I've seen Cody and Faison not top three way too many times to feel confident that they could do it currently in Winter Championship here. I mean, like, even looking today at, like, the matches that we saw, Sandstorm and Boomy were playing out of their minds, and Sandstorm still is, as he does manage to get the double. There's that very faint potential that he can get that offstage read that leads to a KO. They're not going to push Sandstorm off stage too hard. There's virtually no reason to go for that uh -oh. because look what uh -oh. happens. That the was a dodge. dodge comes through, oh, Cody. saving Phazon. Cody also putting out some axe damage. Neutral signature, not going to KO yet. You saw the threat was there. The second he started pushing Phazon a little too far, Cody had to rotate out there and try to keep Phazon alive. Sandstorm's taking damage. Okay, now he's just going to throw those D-lights over the corner. Gets the little poke with the side light. Nice dodge from Sandstorm. He is going back and forth, using his dodge at the perfect Whoa. time. He almost looked like Jackie Chan, where it seems like the, the enemies always come one at a time. Yeah. He deals with one, turns around, hits the other, but it wasn't enough. This is not an action movie, or maybe it is. And Cody and Faison are actually the protagonists. Or maybe it's just early in the movie, and it's like the, the, the protagonist has to fall a little bit and okay. then come back even harder, but this is going to be a hard climb for Boomy and, Sands, uh, Boomy and Sandstorm. Given their history, again, 50-50, basically an even split between both teams. They're going to have to now win three games in a row to take out Faison and Cody Travis, and that was almost a four-stock victory. You can see how quickly Boomy was taken out of the game. He only played about two-thirds of that game, forcing Sandstorm into that extremely long 1v2. Now we're going to Demon Island. The soft platform is going to be taken away. Some of the length on those sidewalls is also going to be taken away. 
They've got their comfort weapons for the most part. Everybody is looking clean. Sandstorm trying to box around Cody Travis right now. You see him? He was actually charging a weapon toss. Maybe to just interrupt Phazon from behind. Got both with the side air, but doesn't read the side sig. That's both team members locked up in that downlight side air. Ooh, that's got Boomy in the red. That side air sent him off stage. This could be the edge guard. He touches, but on the right side, Cody gets the edge guard onto Sandstorm. Of course, that side light and air as the option does get a little bit more stun on that neutral air, but Boomy is so damaged that even without the high variable force, he is still sent pretty far. They find the stock. This one's going to Cody. Red team with a lead. They are O, or sorry, they're 2-0 in this set, which is, it's still, I'm flabbergasted by this performance from Cody Faison today. Yeah, they are playing incredibly well. Something that, again, like, no offense to them, great players, but we have not seen performances like this in a very long time. You saw the quote from Snowy and Luna earlier today about Boomy and Sandstorm being back and better than ever, quote unquote, supposedly. But a lot of people really haven't been talking about Cody and Phazon. And you know, I saw some of the predictions having Cody and Phazon. And it's just like, okay, you just like Cody and Phazon. You just want Cody and Phazon to win. No, the fans knew better as Sandstorm now locked to his final stock here. Winner's side, top eight. Boomy about to join him. Cody Travis hitting those side Easy. airs, the pogo. One more, Boomy gets passed. Boomy finds the weapon, the neutral air, picks the follow-up onto Faison, but Faison was not damaged whatsoever, so that's not going to be too bad. Cody came in with the punish. Again, it's that D-Light. Again, another D-Light. The side air from Boomy. Just trying to get some damage. Downlight recovery. Cody's nice. gone. Faison makes it a trade, though. Downlight recovery. Nice. Faison's going to fall. Last stock every side. I really do like that punish that Faison did where he was sort of following in the air on top or really below Boomy at that time. He didn't want to get caught, so he didn't try to go in too early. He waited for the right moment to strike, sort of babysat Boomy as he was moving towards that upper blast zone and had a fantastic punish. His timing was immaculate. Oh, but Faison trying to get the edge guard. Boomy makes the rotate over. Punishing the side sig comes Sandstorm. Hits a nair, backs away. Oh, that's rough. Just a down sig. There's a neutral sig into the ground pad, oh, but no recovery I on was, either player. I was so scared that recovery was coming. And sig doesn't catch. Down light, side air. Cody making the long road. Just a side light. Boom, he's going to take down Cody. That's it. They hold on. Boomy and Sandstorm take game number three. They put themselves on the board, but narrowly do they get that W. And here's the follow-up from Sandstorm. Carrying all the way into the sky. Nobody was there to interrupt him because Cody was spawning back in the game after just being taken out by Boomy. And here's that D-Light recovery. Boomy's one of the best at it. Not quite as good as Van Thurl, but one of the best for sure. I mean, he, he's, he is definitely one of the most uh, well-established Blasters players in the game at this point. Like, it's hard to argue anyone's got stronger Blasters than Boomy, but here we are into game number four, back on Demon Island, and Boomy immediately interrupting the string from Faison. Cody was the last person to find a weapon here. Boomy already trying to push off stage with that ground pound, attempt the edge guard. Cody's just gonna kind of hold the middle here. Boomy has Faison on the right side. He's gotta be there. careful. Man, the amount of interruptions that have already come out so early in this game. Yeah, saves on both sides as well, just trying to keep their teammates alive. But now the blue team has the red team split. You can see Sandstorm trying to box Faze on the left side, but Faze on gets passed, so now he's able to get back to Cody. Oh, that ended up hitting Cody when it started on to Faison. Sandstorm probably wanted that to maybe continue on to Faison, at least initially, but then he saw the result. Faison ends up falling anyway. Cody, extremely damaged here. We might see him falling. Not off of that. Faison putting out damage on both members of the blue team, but he's caught. A great follow-up from Sandstorm as Boomy picks up the recovery on to Cody Travis. Here's a team combo. Chase dodge up for the recovery, and Faison down to his final stop. So if this goes all the way to game five and Boomy and Cody Travis win, they will actually be even on games, even though there'll be one difference in terms of matches. That's, you know, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Now you can see that shutdown. Boomy has picked up all three KOs so far this game. Whoa, that's big. Storm. 
in trouble. Could see this stock count evened up. He's still swinging on his way back, but wow. he does get the ground touch, so his jumps are reset as he hits the teammate. That was a beautiful sequence from the blue team. Even though Sandstorm ended up falling there, the little bit of team damage from Cody's Axe that picked up Phazon, they were able to turn that into so much. Their positioning and their timing on the extended 2v2 combo punish was really, really good. Oh, but all things considered, this could still go either direction. Basically even the determiner between a top three finish guaranteed or a game five. Bazon and Cody definitely want to get the victory here instead of having to look at a game five against 2v2 legends, Boomy and Sandstorm. I know Cody Combo. and Bazon are playing really well today, but nobody wants any more games than you absolutely have to play against two players of these caliber. Blue team needs this team combo. Phazon not going to give it to them. Sandstorm. He's basically stuck out of this game now. He's so deep red. He has to make all the right decisions as follow-ups. You saw Phazon made the move with the neutral signature. Sandstorm was backing off. He's back over on the wall, this time on the right side. Boom, he's having to essentially fight the 1v2 here. He's getting in. He's getting some That's hits. That's big. There's Cody with the handoff to Phazon. Boom, he's split. Sandstorm goes in, avoids the recovery. Sandstorm launched by the neutral light. Phazon only hits Cody with the recovery, but Cody gets the KO. Trades and wow. Phazon gonna get it. I didn't even, uh, that's just, it happened to line up that way. That was <laughs> I was just genuinely surprised. I wasn't just reading the word on the screen. I was very surprised that uh, that actually got the knockout because it has the bounce off the stage. That's a 3-1 victory for Cody Travis and Phazon over Boomy and Sandstorm. That's uh, that's going to upset a lot of people's brackets. Uh, I mean, yourself and myself, basically everyone that we put in our predictions is now on the elimination side of the bracket. But that is Cody Travis and Faison now guaranteeing a top three finish. Again, something that they haven't done in a hot minute. That's huge. That is going to be Sandstorm and Boomy going down into the elimination bracket. They are going to be fighting the winner of Daddy Heizo and AO Blue versus a couple sets that we have before that that need to filter out. But look at these damage numbers coming out from Cody Travis and Faison. Look at the graph. That second stock of Faison. He lost that so quickly, but didn't let that deter their team from victory. They came back in and actually took Sandstorm's second stock also very quickly. Yeah, uh, that's exactly the story that I'm seeing, right? It's like they took Faison's second stock really fast, but then he extended that third stock. You can see that really long stretch where he's basically taking no damage and then did the same thing back to Sandstorm. And then there's this really long stretch where he's not really taking damage, but there's all this time that Boomy's taking damage. So you see this vertical line right here. You also see the vertical line right here. So it seems like they have that moment where they can really add up that damage very quickly.